welcome to my um, little painting demonstration today. Uh, my name is Patrick Lee Greaves. Um, today I thought I'd have a little go at painting some flowers. Now flowers aren't really my strongest point, uh, so I thought I'd have a go anyway and see how I get on. I'm, rec I'm recording it because I thought it would be useful to those people that have been following the split primary palettes that I've been using, which consists of lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, Windsor blue, cerulean blue, cadmium red and permanent rose. Now this palette is quite a versatile palette and I think painting these flowers is going to prove that as well. The fact that it can do very uh, dark heavy landscapes, um, seascapes and it can actually tackle um, flowers. So anyway because of that I thought it would be worth uh, videoing and showing you what how I got on. Like I said, it's it's not something I'm really comfortable with flowers. You've I feel that it's you've got to have quite a light touch to paint flowers. And I wouldn't I don't think I have really. I'm quite heavy handed with paint. I like to get into darks and mixing darks and earthy colours. So painting those lovely fresh primary light colours that flowers give us are often is quite challenging for me. But like yourselves, to be a well-rounded artist and to be able to sort of paint all things and or as many things as you possibly can learn, it's worth pushing the boundaries for yourself and having a go. Now I'm not going to talk all the way through this little video demonstration. There'll be moments of silence where you can just watch it. So I'm sure my voice will get on your nerves after a while. But uh, I'll point out things of interest as they come along, so hopefully they'll be of interest to you. Now I'm painting on in one of my sketchbooks, like usual. Um, in one of my we're on Arsh watercolor paper, I'm using um, Winsor and Newton and Dale Rowney and Jackson's watercolor paints, which I think are pretty good. Now I'm just using some Windsor Blue with a little bit of cadmium yellow for the greenery and quite a small brush. I think that's sort of evident the fact that I was quite sort of intimidated by the painting because I'm using a fiddly brush. I know I wouldn't usually be using brushes that size and I think if I could just bring myself to free up and not feel um, kind of like intimidated by trying to paint flowers I think I'll probably get a better result and maybe that's what I need to do maybe the next painting I do I'll really go bold with a big brush splash the paint on and be really kind of almost semi impressionistic um, well I'd say my paintings are pretty much impressionistic most of the time but I'll be really more so with the flowers I think I tend to try and slip too much into realism when I'm painting flowers and that and that's not really me but I'm trying, subconsciously, I'm trying to think to myself, well, I must do a really good job of this. I must really do the best I can do. So um, I'm confining myself in, uh, to, so I, so I actually do produce the best paintings. I'm, I'm holding myself back um, instead of letting myself go. And I think in painting, you have to let yourself go to get the best result. Now, you know, if, if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Um, you can, there's a little notifications bell you can press when you subscribe, and that actually gives you alerts to when I put a new video on. So that's always worth doing if you're interested. I'm also uh, running a course on Udemy at the moment for, uh, for artists, for, for, for uh, beginners and intermediate painters. Um, it's a nice uh, waterside scene of a boat at low water. It goes into great detail, um, shows you all the drawing process, um, how I fix the paper to the board, and everything you need to know really to paint the painting in much in, in great detail. So if that's something that would interest you, follow the link below the video, and you can always uh, join in there. And don't forget also my website, purewatercolour.com, 
which is also again there's a link underneath the video to that and that will teach you loads because we have great artists there members that uh, show their work take part in weekly challenges um, and then critique each other's paintings so it's an, that's another good place to to come along and it's completely free there's no money involved at all you can join the site for nothing and take part in all the activities and um, chat in the forum and share your work with other artists okay so now i was painting the jar and for that i'm just using the winds of blue a touch of yellow and a touch of uh, red just to make some kind of neutral colors just to try and catch the uh, the reflections in the in the little jar i don't want to spend too long on it um, obviously it could be done a lot finer than this this is just as we were saying earlier this was probably the loosest part of the painting was the jar um, didn't get the shape very well but it does it does tidy up later it looks better later it comes together a bit more now the one thing I did on this painting that I wasn't I didn't really want to do I didn't really didn't really want to have to do was darken the background as dark as it eventually go but I thought it was the only way of actually making the painting sing out and have impact so at the end I kind of really darken the background you'll see it if you hang on to, to the end to see it to watch um, I really add some darks and I don't know if it works or not really um, I think it's a bit of a cop out to get an effect I think a lot of good artists that paint flowers can get the effect without darkening darkening the uh, the background but yeah like as I say this is a learning curve for me too so that's a good you know that's okay I quite can accept that so I'm just working on the the pinks now the flowers and uh, just sort of layering it up adding some darker color then applying some water just for it underneath it just to let it run and bleed in not sure what I'm doing here I was making a bit of a mess of things and then correcting it just I kept reworking it you know it was just by the time I finished this bit it didn't make any sense really the flower I hadn't, I hadn't actually achieved anything by plodging all that colour. Um, I think I, what I should have done, when I think back, is actually applied the dark centre when the other petals were still damp, so that that colour could have just bled out slightly. Um, I saw I kind of like jumped a stage, if you like, and I'd left it to dry. But so that's the whole process of painting things you you know you're not familiar with, is that you learn. You learn where you went wrong. So next time, hopefully, I can get it right. Oh, one other thing. I've been shopping today and bought myself uh, a nice new camera for making videos. Because um, I really want to improve the video quality and the ability to zoom in easier to show you details closer up. Um, so I've been on uh, eBay today and bought myself, it is a new one, but I bought it on eBay. Um, and I've got the Canon 80D um, DSLR camera. And hopefully that was going to make, when I get used to it, will make some good quality videos for YouTube and my courses. I'm quite pleased with the quality of video I do now, but I think it just can be improved. So... Uh, Obviously, it'll be a bit of a learning curve getting to use used to using it, but uh, I really think it will give me a lot more control over my videos and uh, the ability, like I said, to zoom in and let you see the detail closer um, at times what I'm doing, and um, while still retaining the quality of the image. So that's quite exciting. That should be with me. Um, what's the day today? Sunday should be with me by Wednesday and then I go back to work on Thursday so unfortunately I probably won't get a lot done with it until after the weekend but uh, I might get a bit of time to play around with it but what I'll probably do is put some sample um, videos out 
using it to start with just in case uh, they don't turn out too well but uh, hopefully they should yeah and then the next thing will be to get a decent microphone for it so the audio is of better quality um, so we're getting there slowly building things up okay let's get back to the actual painting sorry I've rambled a bit about other things now you can see I'm kind of building up the center of the painting and for that I'm just using a little bit darker mixes of the um, permanent rose with a little bit of Windsor blue in it at times and also a little bit of cadmium yellow so it's various mixes of those three colors just to give the flower sort of variety of color I was winging it a bit with the flower. I don't. I'm not very accurate to the real thing. It really is an impression. Um, but uh, I will practice that and get that right. Just painting the little centres now with a little bit of cadmium yellow and permanent rose. Oh, I'm not sure what these little flowers are, what they're called, but uh, they're little white ones. And that was enough for me. I'm going to go back into the green here. Again, this is just the cadmium yellow with a little bit of Windsor blue, darkening it down a little bit, just to add a bit more um, interest to the green. Now I'm just going back into the centre of the uh, peony again. To darken it. Sorry about the flicker. My lights, uh, I put my uh, UV lights on for a moment and um, it causes something to do with the frame rate, but it's only temporary. Okay, then now here comes the big dark background. I picked myself up my, I think it's three quarters of an inch or an inch brush and started laying on the dark colours because I wasn't happy with the impact the flowers were having. They just looked flat and uninteresting. So I thought, ah, let's put a nice dark background in and that will make them pop out a bit. So anyway, I used just kind of various mixes of Windsor blue and a bit of cadmium red and uh, a bit of cadmium yellow and just mixed it up a bit to try and make the colour. So it wasn't just a but sort of like a dark background. I tried to add interest to it by placing in various colours in that dark mix. And by using the big brush, it stopped me from fiddling around the flowers. Just adding a little bit of uh, green there, sort of yellow to it, just to sort of make it a different colour as it came across. This was something, as I said earlier, I was really hoping to avoid and not actually having to have done. I'd be much more happier if I could paint the scene and it just looked good on its own as a little uh, pot of flowers without having to introduce the, the dark background. But I knew that I'd have to do it on this one. I got to a point where I thought, well, I, I can't do any more to them, really. I should have got it all down in the first couple of washes I, I think, like I tried to explain before, when you actually go into paint, when, you, when you're when you doing your painting, you need to get as much down as you can in the first wash, couple of washes, um, to keep going in and messing with it. You just end up with a very flat, dead-looking painting. And it was too late by this time to actually improve it in any way. So the only way to give it impact was to paint the dark background. Now, that won't be everybody's cup of tea. I know people don't like it, but... Uh, you know, it was in my sketchbook, so I wanted it to look sort of passable in my sketchbook. Anyway, I've enjoyed our little chat. I know it's been a bit one-sided, one way, but uh, I'm sure you will have some nice some comments below that can um, give me some clue to what I might could have done better, perhaps, which would be great. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sign off and uh, go make myself a cup of tea. 
I'll leave you with the rest of the video and a little bit of music just to see it out. It's got a couple of minutes left. But uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you do. And uh, check out my website and the course if you're interested. So thanks for watching. And there'll be another video coming very soon. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.